Tickety Boo News. <laughs> you know, you know when we play the other one from the Sexual Follies, I don't get to see me dancing, but I, you, you, it is now me dancing. Yeah, you got to put that up there so I can see it. <laughs> it's not fair that the audience gets entertained, and I'm not. I'm here to be entertained. I want to be entertained. Uh, so Tickety Boo News is not happy news. It's the news about how to read uh, the newspaper, and there was this uh, how to read the news basically, and how to not get swept up in their craziness. There's a, a picture, a, an article by Yoni Applebaum in the Atlantic Monthly, is the American idea doomed? And he, he comes out with a lot of bad news. He says, America no longer serves as a model for the world as it once did. Its influence is receding. At home, critics on the left reject the notion that the U.S. has a special role to play. On the right, nationalists push to define American identity around culture, not principles. Is the American idea doomed? Uh, obsolete. And he goes on to say, to some extent, America is a victim of its own success. It's, it's spread to other nations. The American ideas spread to other nations has left America less distinctive than it once was. It's also failed to live up to its own ideals. Recent reports rank the U.S. 28th out of 35 developed countries in the percentage of adults who vote uh, and 32nd in income equality. Uh, its rates of intergenerational economic mobility are among the lowest in the developed world. An opportunity to the United States now falls short. It's no surprise that younger Americans have lost faith in a system that no longer seems to deliver on its promises. Um, around the globe, those who dislike the American ideas about democracy now outnumber those who favor them. All of this has left many Americans feeling disoriented. Their faith that their nation has something distinctive to offer the world has been shaken. Uh, on the left, many have gravitated toward a strange sort of universalism, focusing on America's flaws while admiring other nations' virtues. They decry nationalism and covet open borders, imagining a world in which ideas can prevail without nations to champion them. Many on the right now doubt that America is a land defined by a distinctive idea at all. President Donald Trump's rhetoric is curiously devoid of references to a common civic creed. He promotes instead a more generic nationalism, one defined like any nations by culture and borders and narrow interests and enemies. Both of these visions are corrosive, although not equally. And then he goes on to bash Trump. Here's what I want to say about this. I, I agree with him that the the left's idea that ideas just somehow float in the eye, you know, that common sense is going to make us all decent and free and that it just kind of lands on us like the gentle rain from heaven. This, this idea that it's not America, it's not the people who fought and died, it's not our history that goes into it is absurd. And I also agree that Donald Trump does not fully understand the American idea, that he doesn't talk enough about the Constitution, he doesn't quite understand what it is, and that the people who do talk about those things hate Donald Trump and will not connect him to the, to the ideas. They won't help connect him to the ideas. And this, I think those people are wrong. The intellectual right that has abandoned Donald Trump, and here's why. It has to do with Edmund Burke, okay? Edmund Burke was like kind of the founder of conservatism. And Edmund Burke was a uh, parliamentarian in England, and he recognized the American Revolution and he supported it, but he attacked the French Revolution. I just now reread, just a couple of months ago, I reread his remarks about the revolution, his whole book about the revolution in France and why he thinks it's wrong. And why he understood that the American Revolution was good and the French Revolution was bad has to do with the idea of tradition. Burke's ideas about tradition are too often um, talked about as if they were some emotional thing, that he just liked tradition. But what he said was that if you are free, if your country is free and prosperous, there's every reason to believe that your traditions had something to do with that. And so you should be slow to throw them away. You should be slow to throw your traditions away. You know, that one of those letters talked about the Rubin Report, uh, Dave Rubin, and Dave Rubin is gay. And he said to me, I don't understand why you small... Uh, why small government conservatives are against gay marriage. And I said, well, I totally, you know, I, I'm on the liberal side of this question, but I totally understand it because marriage is one of the founding traditions, the founding principles of our democracy, of our culture. And you don't just redefine it because you think it would be nice. You know, I understand that. I mean, I, in this, this case, I think I, I side with freedom. I always side with freedom and work out the problems later. But still, still, you know, you don't throw traditions away. And that's what Burke was talking about. And when Donald Trump hits the NFL because they're not standing up for the flag, it's important, it's not right for us to turn away when, when people in, uh, in Hollywood start to stand up and say, well, maybe men should protect women 
a little bit. Maybe men have a job to stand up for women a little bit. You know, that's a good thing. These are traditions. And when feminists sweep this stuff away, when feminists say, don't open the door for me, when feminists say, don't stand up when I come to the table, they're throwing away the traditions that communicate this friendliness and this helpfulness between the sexes, without which there's not going to be equality, without which there's only going to be brutality and weakness. That's all there's going to be. And so Donald Trump is doing something in a flawed way. I acknowledge that, but he's doing something important. He is standing up for our traditions, our visceral love of country, our, our uh, organic, emotional love of country, and our love of our traditions. And they have been under attack for so long that just doing that makes him popular, that just doing that makes him right. And so I would say to my friends, and I love these guys, you know, the, my friends on the intellectual right who I admire so much and, and read and look up to, you you know, I would just say to them, you know, you can't live fully in ideas. These ideas live inside a temple, and that temple is built on respect for the flag. That temple is built for respect for our armed forces. A temple is built on respect for manliness and, and femininity. That is the temple that is built, that these ideas live inside. It's not just the earth we, we live in. It's not just the continent we live in, but it's also these traditions. And Donald Trump, I... I acknowledge he does it in a flawed way, but he does it, and he does it with strength and vigor, and people are responding to that. And I think that if, even if we, that we should be supplying some of the ideas that go behind what he does, because it's important. He's winning these battles that we have been complaining about for years. And again, I, I will always come out and say when I think Trump does something wrong, and I'll always come out and hit him for some of his ego, ego and narcissism, but this is so important. This fight for the culture is so important because it protects the traditions that, that protect our ideas. Tomorrow, who's called? Oh, I think Crowder's coming Crowder. tomorrow. Oh, I always love it when Crowder comes by uh, because we, he's the only time they let him out of the cage, I think, is when he comes to do the show. Stephen Crowder will be here. I'm Andrew Claven. This is The Andrew Claven Show. I hope to see you then.